Soldiers from the 10th Division of the Red Army are swarming into the small town of Jingda Anhui as they retreat from nationalist forces during the infamous Long March. John and Betty Stam are missionaries with China Inland Mission who have only been in China for a short time. They have a three-month-old daughter named Helen. A local magistrate warns the Stams about the approach of the communists and urges them to flee. By the time they want to slip out of the city, it is too late. The communists are literally on their doorstep. After robbing the couple, the communists first drag John and then later Betty and the little Helen from their home to a local jail. Little Helen starts crying, and an annoyed soldier suggests that she be killed. A prisoner protests, and the soldiers turn on him to ask if he would be willing to die for the baby. He offers his life. The man is immediately killed, and little Helen's life is spared. The next morning, the Stams are forcibly marched 12 miles to the city of Miaoshou. As the soldiers stop to rest for the night, Betty Stam hides her daughter in a sleeping bag and leaves her behind in a room. As they continue the march, a Chinese shopkeeper is arrested when he pleads for the lives of the Stams. The soldiers search his house and discover a Bible and a hymnal. He and the Stams are taken to a mountain called Eagle's Point. John Stam is made to kneel and is beheaded. Betty Stam is executed a few moments later along with the Chinese believer. I'm standing here at the Martyrs' Wall at the Voice of the Martyrs in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. More than 80 years ago, two missionaries were kidnapped by communist soldiers in China. They marched them to another village and then beheaded them because of their Christian faith. Those two missionaries were John and Betty Stam. John and Betty Stam were my great, great aunt and uncle. As I travel to China soon to meet with persecuted believers and to share their stories, I want to spend some time to try to find the grave of John and Betty Stam. I want to see what the legacy of their work in China was. I want to see what the legacy of their death. And I hope that I can see some of the vibrant Christianity that exists in China today. China has been a communist country for more than 50 years. The 80s and 90s were difficult years for Christians, and many suffered greatly. Today, there is less overt persecution, but Christians are hyper aware that they are being watched. To find my relatives, I travel to Hefei, the capital of Anhui province, and take a high-speed train to reach Wuhu City, where my great aunt and uncle were buried. I don't know what to expect when we reach Wuhu. I ask some local Christians to meet us, but I don't know how they'll receive us. When I exit the train station, the believers are waiting for me and warmly welcome me. It's a blessing to get to know them and to hear how my aunt and uncle's story has encouraged them. They've arranged vehicles to take us directly to the spot where my relatives are buried. As we make our way to the place where they are buried, I learn from the local believers that Anhui province is one of the poorest provinces in China, but it is also the province with the highest percentage of Christians. It is a place where many Chinese believers have suffered for their faith. When we finally arrive, we are right on the banks of the legendary Yangtze River, though the river is difficult to see today because of air pollution. Beside the river is this old Methodist hospital where the bodies of John and Betty Stam were brought for burial. We're here at Wuhu Hospital in Anhui province. This is likely where my great aunt and uncle John and Betty Stam are buried. Now their gravestones are no longer here. They were destroyed during the Cultural Revolution. But one thing that really stands out to me is that on their gravestone it had Philippians 121. For me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. So everybody wants to know what happened to the baby, Helen Stam, who was left in that room. Yeah, I, I don't think you mentioned this, but her mom, I thought this was interesting, pinned some money to her diaper. Um, and she stayed there for two days until some Chinese Christians found her. And um, she, they said she was hungry and tired and wet, but she was just fine. And they ended up carrying her in a basket um, overland for several um, hours to get her to her grandparents. And she grew up fine. She totally healthy, nothing, no worse for the ordeal that she went through. You talked about meeting some local Christians there, and we couldn't show that. Why not? 
Oh, because of the situation in China, they didn't want to have their faces broadcast everywhere um, as people who were helping foreign Christians. Um, though, and to me, this was actually the really neatest part of the whole experience. Um, history is past, right? But what their experience is, is now, and they have a big church that meets fairly openly, but when we asked them about it, they said, yeah, you know, we can meet, but um, we can't do anything too overt or too in the government space. So they didn't want to be on the internet and they were, they were cautious being seen around town with us, but they were so open in showing us their whole church, all the aid that they're sending to other parts of China. They're just a very active, uh, vibrant church. So you got to go to this uh, really special small city and, and see the final resting place of your relatives. What, what did that mean for you? I have grown up knowing this story, it's just kind of part of my heritage. I don't think it felt very real though. These were people in the past and I um, didn't really think more about it. So when we were gonna be there and I thought, you know, this is a chance to kind of see what this really is. Um, it was, it made it more real in my mind, but I think the, the biggest thing for me was seeing all those believers who are there. And um, that province has the most Christians in China. And I think it's partly in, because of the missionaries who've worked there for so long. Um, so to me, it was just to be with those believers was so encouraging to see how much they love the Lord and how much they wanted to worship Him. And they were so, they were much more active in their faith than a lot of churches here are. Um, when they took us in the room with uh, all those bags of aid that they were sending to another church that needed it, it was just like, you know, these guys mean it. They mean it when they say they want to follow Jesus. So I just love spending time with those believers. And um, it's cool to know that my relatives had this impact on them, but what's even cooler is that God is still at work in China today.